Hello Forest Friends! The video I'm doing today is a very different type of video for my channel. I've never felt compelled to comment my feelings on current events because usually I can't say that I know enough to get myself involved in any sort of controversy. But I thought that in the situation that happened a few days ago at the Cincinnati Zoo, I might be able to shed a little bit of light on that I feel not many other people, if anyone, I can't really find anyone talking about the point of view I want to discuss. So I'm going to be 28 years old soon. I have been living in Florida for two years, but I'm originally from Hamilton, Ohio. I was born there and I eventually at six years old <laughs> moved to Milford, Ohio, which is just maybe not even 20 minutes north of Cincinnati. I've been to the Cincinnati Zoo a lot. I've been going there most of my life since the time I was probably four or five and I've even been there as an adult. Now I'm not here to talk about necessarily who's to blame. I'm not here to talk about the parents at all. I'm very upset that the life of a 17 year old endangered silverback gorilla was taken away. I think we're all very upset about that. Needless to say, we are very close to gorillas. Whether you believe in evolution or not, they're kind of, you know, I feel like a lot of humans have a little bit of like a kinship, like a brotherinship. I don't know what the exact word for that is. But we can relate to gorillas pretty well. Now, being a frequent visitor of the Cincinnati Zoo, every other field trip we went to the Cincinnati Zoo, it seemed like. And I went there a lot with my brothers and my dad for, you know, the Christmas thing they held every year. They had the show of lights. I love the Cincinnati Zoo. Um, now as an adult, I'm kind of seeing zoos in a different way. Something I said on social media, the only real thing I said about the situation is maybe it would be safer for the animals to be watching humans in an enclosed environment. I don't know. But what I wanted to talk about is the Cincinnati Zoo itself. It is a really cool zoo. I've only been to two different zoos. I've been to the Cincinnati Zoo as a kid, went there a million times. Okay, not a million, but you know, I went there a lot. I'm an animal lover, as you guys know. I really like to see and interact with animals. But um, anyhow, um, if you've ever been to the Cincinnati Zoo, you can relate to me on this, I believe. The first time I went to the Columbus Zoo as an adult, I was blown away by the difference in like technology and how up to date everything seemed to be. The Cincinnati Zoo seemed a little, I hate to say janky in comparison, but if you've been to the two, you can see very clear differences. Um, I will, of course, show you guys some pictures along the way to describe what I'm talking about, but as an adult, I went there about three years ago, I think, and I had a little bit of a realization in the reptile house. They have this circular enclosure in the middle of this round building. And in that enclosure, there are alligators and Florida snapping turtles. Now, the thing about this enclosure is that it's not very deep at all. I will show you guys a picture. I don't know the exact measurements. I couldn't find blueprints anywhere on the internet. But anyway, um, had... Having have been a six-year-old, five-year-old at the Cincinnati Zoo, the thought had crossed my mind, wow, if I wanted to get in with those alligators, all I have to do is, I guess, climb this maybe three, four-foot barrier. I know any adult could lean and tower over this thing. I'll show you pictures showing the comparisons of human to this railing. If you can climb a tree, you can get in this thing. And a lot of the same kind of things go like in their section called the Cat Canyon. You are walking this like wooden bridge type thing, a real long railing. It's kind of like a, you know, wooden bridge trail. And 
The only thing separating me, and we'll even say as an adult, from a white tiger is, you know, a railing about half my height and maybe a tree's worth of climbing. Like, I could get to that tiger if I wanted to. I will show you guys a diagram of the enclosure that Harambe was in. And as a child, thank goodness, I knew that I did not want to go in that moat and be with those wild animals. I just wanted to view and respect them from afar. I can't say that I went there as a three-year-old. I honestly don't remember. But as a kindergartner, the thoughts crossed my mind and I was able to decide for myself that that wasn't something I wanted to do. But honestly, the barriers there are kind of a joke. Adults, children, anyone, anyone who's unstable mentally, anyone who wanted to get into the tiger exhibit, the alligator exhibit, the gorilla exhibit can easily do that. Has anyone not seen Jurassic Park? Do people not recall Jurassic Park? I feel like if we would just remember Jurassic Park, humanity could maybe learn something. Why, especially with endangered animals that we should be protecting so closely, why is there not some sort of shocking mechanism, some sort of barrier that, okay, that could physically stop human or beast from, or at least make them make the decision if they want to be shocked again in order to get in or out. Something like that needs to take place, I think, anywhere there are creatures bigger and more powerful than us. The elephant enclosure there, I mean, there's wires, but are they electric? Do we... I need to look further into this, and that's why I kind of waited to make this video. I wanted to think about and investigate, and honestly, the only thing I can get out of this whole situation is that the security at the Cincinnati Zoo... is not something I would leave. I'm First of all, I'm not a mother. I have a stepson. He's 12 years old, so I can't exactly relate to that instinct of what would happen if my child was in the enclosure. But what I do know is that it clearly wasn't enough to stop the situation. And I feel like it could have easily been stopped. If those three wires that I remember being the barrier, I'll put a picture in now so I can visually show you guys what I'm talking about. This barrier that they are talking about, from what I recall, is three wires. Then there are what? Um, the barrier is three feet tall, and it, I believe, is three wires, not electric or anything like that, just wires. I am like 115 pounds, and I could slip through that. I could slither through that in an instant as an adult. If I was like, feeling saucy that day, I could go in there and party with the gorillas, have a little swim, no big deal. And the director of the zoo said that he's not 100% sure that there is going to be a change. It's just being investigated. Well, I'm sorry, but the only strong opinion I have is that things at the Cincinnati Zoo need to change. That reptile exhibit, the gators there in that hole, that I could easily get into anyone anyone could get into. Someone could lean over too far and fall into it by accident. Someone could bump into someone when it's real congested in there. It's like a, it's like a circle. You go around and you see all the things on the side. You can look at all the enclosed animals, but in the middle, there's nothing on the top of these gators. Nothing. I just, I don't know. I would like to know everyone's opinion. I don't want this to turn in to hatred towards the parents. I don't want hatred towards the zoo because I really do hold that place close to my heart. It was a huge part of my childhood. And it breaks my heart that this whole fiasco went down. But I would like to know how you guys feel. Do your research. If you've been to the Cincinnati Zoo, let me know what you think. Um, if you feel like giving it a Google. It's always worth a Google. Um, let me know what you think down below. Like I said, this is not blaming the parents. I'm not even going to go into that whole situation. Um, I just think that the Cincinnati Zoo needs to embrace the responsibility that they hold towards these animals. 
I feel like they are doing what's best for them financially and I can't say that I would go back there again. I went there three years ago as, a, as an adult and had a blast. But thinking about the situation and the fact that they are not taking responsibility and there are clear physical changes that need to happen at that particular zoo. I don't know. Just let me know what you guys think. Um, I appreciate that we keep the comments as loving and as productive as possible. There's no need to fight about who was at fault here. We just need to think about realistic changes that can be made to prevent this from happening in the future. In a perfect world, animals wouldn't be in an enclosure for our viewing. I think that zoos should maybe only take in animals that wouldn't survive in the wild and that would make a perfectly cool thing. Like it would be more of a sanctuary as opposed to a money-making conglomeration. I don't even know if I said that right, but whatever. I'm just... I don't know. I do feel for the zoo. I know that they lost a human-like creature that meant a lot to them. But I've watched the interviews. I've seen enough to know that the real issues here are not being addressed and that's the only thing I wanted to accomplish with this video is that they just look at not only the gorilla enclosure but the other questionable exhibits at the Cincinnati Zoo. Um, thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate the fact that I have an outlet that I can use to voice my opinion. It's kind of hard to talk about these things with loved ones because it's just like politics. Like, everyone has a different opinion and it can get heated very easily, especially when talking about something so sensitive. So, thank you all for letting me use my channel as a way to kind of get my feelings out because I really felt compelled to say something, but I didn't want to do it on, like, Facebook and be easily misconstrued. This way I can tell you guys exactly how I feel. It's not written. It's not typed. There's no chance of autocorrect messing up my message or anything. And Cincinnati Zoo, if you see this, I've had some of the most memorable times of my life at your attraction. And I would hate to think, I would hate for something to happen to the Cincinnati Zoo, but really you guys need to examine each and every exhibit and find out what the real risks are for each individual animal. The fact that Harambe is or was an endangered silverback gorilla, think about the fact that that endangered animal should have higher protection. There should be maybe some sort of electrical last resort measure in place before that 15 foot drop into the moat. But yeah, I guess that's really all I have to say about this. I don't mean to offend anyone. I feel bad for the mother. I feel bad for the zoo. I feel bad for the gorilla who paid the ultimate price in this situation. I really encourage people to look at the real issues here and kind of maybe see if we can work towards eliminating potential risks if we're going to keep this operation going. Thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate you guys more than you will ever know. I love you all so much and I will hopefully not have to do a video this emotional again, but I'm glad I finally did something more than talking about my opinion on a product or something like that. So I'm truly grateful. Alrighty guys, I will see you all in my next video. Bye!